it, it really tells a lesson about how to how to work with really large data sets by by using you know examples instead of the full data set. Um, so it's it's kind of a very it's not just a powerful analysis tool. It's also it tells you a lot of you know it's a powerful way of thinking about these big data sets. And we'll actually come back and use. The kind of this, this technique several times throughout the class in actual algorithms later on, where we're actually going to um, realize that what's going on is there's actually some turnoff hopping down underneath um, the algorithm. So, um, This to Bernstein was like in the maybe in the 1920s, um, but his his form of this was not as as, as useful. Um, okay, so so it's, so it'll, it'll take me a while to set this up, and it'll look complicated, but then I'll try and break it down and give intuition behind it. So you're going to have R independent uh, random uh, um, art um, you can have art um, um, these independent random variables um, so you can have a set x of these x1 x2 up to xr um, and so then um, you're going to have, and you're going to have a key property such that xi is going to be less than some value delta i and greater than um, um, negative delta i, and the expected value of each xi is equal to zero. So each event expects to be equal to zero. Um, and it's bounded within some range. So it's a hard bound. So you know it's not below delta, negative delta i or above positive delta i. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to look at is the, is the average of, of all of these. So let, let m equals 1 over r of the sum of all these x i. Right? So we're going to have a bunch of these of these random variables, and we're going to look at the result of the average of all of them. Um, and so what we know is that um, the expected value of, of m is, is also zero based on, based on this property. And we know that it's, it's at most, you know, it's, it's also at most the sum of the delta i's, right? But we're going to get a much, a much tighter bound, right? Well, um, we know that, that um, um, negative is less than m less than m. Right, it's less than this, but, but this bound is not going to be very useful. So we have a bunch of these random variables which may each be an observation of something, and uh, they all have the right, ex they all have this expected value zero, and they're all bounded. And we want to know what their average is. Now, we have a loose bound, but we're going to say that it, could act, it should actually be much smaller than this. So think of this, this delta i could be 1, um, each of the 1, and so we'd say it's between negative r and r. And what we're going to say is that instead, the property is going to be that, um, you know, um, <coughs> with, with high probability, and, and I'll define it more precisely, that um, it's going to be basically the square root so if, if each of these delta i's are 1 then this will be between about square root r and square root r where is our bound coming from like our delta i are this like our extreme observed values or what um, yeah so, so one way is thinking of um, so one, 
way of thinking about this is looking at if, 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 you, if you take a coin and you flip it and you assign it uh, one of its head and minus one of its tails, right? And, um, and so then each of these is a coin flip, mm -hmm. and so then this this delta i is is a bound that we we've, we've chosen somehow. So just the highest, the most extreme possible. Yeah, yeah, right. Kind of right. So so often you're able to kind of determine these delta i somehow based on how you set up the experiment. And I'll go through an example or two of using this this a bit later. Um, so that um, now once you have it, the, the real thing that, that you want to say is the probability that that m is greater than some value alpha. Right, so, so this is some value alpha, this may be something like square root r, something like that, that we want to, or, well, the, um, sorry, this is the average, so this is over So one over the square um, so, um, so, so this is the average. You can you can scale it, you know, to get the sum instead, um, right? So, um, so then we're going to say that the main result is that it's less than two to the e to the minus alpha. Um, so. We use this expression x, where we're going to have um, e to the x is is I'm going to write um, x to the x, right? This here. So because it's it's hard to write exponents on the board and realize what's an exponent and what's not. So um, so two x of minus alpha squared over making the constants right. Delta I squared. Um, so this is this is this is the main result. So what's the delta I? The what? Delta I. We said um, this delta I. The maximum of the delta I. This, this is the sum over all the delta. So sum. Yeah, sorry, that's the sum. Pass a certain threshold, basically, as as this gets past the sum of these delta i squared, um, as this alpha does, it drops off exponentially. So it drops off very quickly. And typically, what you want to do is you want to say that this is less than some delta, and then you solve, um, and then you solve for the value r. Um, you set this equal to the epsilon. This is your error. You set um, so you set this equal to epsilon, and then you solve for r sub in equals, and you get some expression that looks like this. So k is equal to r for this number of samples, and you get some expression over epsilon squared log over delta. And if you solve for it, it's going to look something like this. So what's going on here is you're taking a bunch of these random trials that each have the right expected value. So each trial is right in expectation. It's an, it's an estimate of, your, of what you're trying to estimate. It's a good estimate. And it's not too far off. And it can't be too far off from the estimate. So these are the two properties that you need to have. And then if you combine a bunch of these together, then you can get a very good estimate. And if you look at the, 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 um, the fractional amount of error that you have, your error goes in goes down really quickly, is, is what's happening here. Um, so let me start by going, um, let me go through an example. Um, and I'm going to go through an example to try and show how you can get uh, this bound here. Yeah. 
No, no, hang on, never mind. Sorry. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Um, As R increases, yeah. But anyway, yeah, sir. I am going to ask my question now. So, what would you use this for? So, you would say, like, if I'm flipping a coin, this is our expected value. And then, if I can show, like, that our actual value is really high, I can show that the coin is, like, weighted, or. Uh, I just um, want to. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah. So. I mean, the whole notion, so what you say is right, except for the word show. Um, I'm, I'm usually very skeptical of um, statistics that say I've showed something is true. You can say why you, you think it's, it's, yeah. it's not true. But, um, um, but otherwise, that's correct, yeah. So you, you, could, you could say if you flip, if you flip a coin um, n times, and you want how many more heads than tails do I have? You're not going to have, basically this will say you're very unlikely to have more than square root 10 more heads than tails. Yeah. Is, is basically what this, what this balance is saying. Okay. Um, so maybe let's go through that example. Maybe, well, I don't think this example is much harder than that. So, um, okay, so, Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to analyze this for a single one of these bins. I'm going to look at I'm going to look at this scenario where I have a single bin, uh, which has um, I expect to see um, I expect to see one over n of the of the um, so I, you know I'm going to throw throw a ball in one of these bins and I'm going to expect to see um, a ball in there one over n percentage of the time. And I'm going to look at my estimate of my counts of how many I actually get in there. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to have these, these k um, trials. Um, and so, so um, each, so I'm going to have, um, and I'm going to have um, random variables y1 up through y k associated with these trials. And so, y i is going to be 1 if, um, let me use j so I can keep i up over there. So y j is going to be 1 if, um, if, um, if I have event i, which is the ball falls in the bin that I'm looking at. I'm going to look at, you know, just this one bit. Okay, so now, and then this event is going to be, <coughs> j is going to be 0 if the event is is not equal to i. Okay, so I've got these, these these random variables, and my count is going to be um, my estimate f tilde i. Let's see, it's so how am I going to write this? It's going to be the sum over i equals one to k of the or j equals one to k of of wj, um, this divided by k, right? So this is what I want to estimate. Okay, so now this doesn't quite look like this framework yet, so I need to do a little bit changing of my variables. And so every time you use this, you need to probably do some changing of variables, and it's it's not too hard, but you can figure out how to do it, right? So, so, so we're going to turn each variable y j into an x j that, that satisfies some properties here. So we're going to say that um, so this f i tilde, right, this is exactly what I had over here. It's, so I had f i as a number of trials that draw this, um, and then fi tilde is fi over k. So it's the fraction of the trials that end up with an element i. So I'm estimating the fraction of the trials with element i. So the fraction of trials with i. Um, is 
isn't it better to set yj is equal to minus 1 if you went? <coughs> well, so I'm going to do a transformation and I'll, I'll, I'll fix the problem I think you're complaining about. Right, so I'm going to set xi equal to yi minus 1 over n. Or <coughs> xj, sorry. xj equals yj minus 1 over n. All right, so now what is the expected value of xj? Zero. Right, it's, it's going to be 0. So now I have um, expected value of xj equals to 0. I also have that um, negative delta is less than or equal to xj is less than or equal to delta. And what values can I set for delta? I can say that, um, so, so, so actually what I can say is that minus 1 over n is less than <coughs> xj is less than or equal 1 minus 1 over n is less or equal to delta, I can say this, and set delta equals to 1. And so n I, is 2, right? So what? n is just 2 in this example? We either hit the event or we don't? Um, it, it could be if we just had two bins. Well, let's say I had n bins. Oh, okay. Right, so, but I'm just looking at just one of them at this point. Right, so I, I can set delta, each delta i or this delta to be um, to be 1. Okay? So now I've determined my deltas and my, my, my expected value is 0 is correctly, so that's all good. Now I need to get, I need to somehow write this f, f, uh, f tilde. I, I want to estimate I can only use this m term instead here. So what I want to estimate is that this m term doesn't vary too much. And what I would like to say is something like the probability that that fi tilde minus one over n is greater has more than so much error. Let's let me make this just use epsilon, right? So I, what's the probability that my estimate is off by more than epsilon? This is what it should be, and this is what the what the estimate is, right? So th this is what I would like to measure. This. This here. I'm just looking at one of the variables, uh, not the maximum, but but I want to make sure, I want to say what's the probability that it's more error than I'm supposed to have. Um, okay, so that's um, that's here, and so what is this, so, but I only know how to understand this, these m values. Well, um, if I wrote the sum over these xi's, or the average over these xi's, I'm going to have that that m is equal to the sum over xi over, over k, or xj is over k, and, and this is going to be equal to 1 over k times the sum of um, yi minus 1 over n. And this is going to be uh, so, so this term here is going to be exactly um, this is exactly f tilde f i tilde and this term which is actually this is 1 over k times the sum of j equals 1 to k of 1 over n is going to equal 1 over n. I'm summing over k of these terms and then dividing by k. So this is 1 over n. So this is this term is right here. Right? So, so this sum of these of these x, these average of these xj's is exactly m, and it's exactly this term I want to estimate. Right? So now I want to say um, the probability here, I want this to be less than, the probability of more than epsilon air is less than delta. Right? I have at most epsilon error with probability at most at most delta. Or with I'm correct with probably one minus delta. Right? So I want to say this is less than this is less than um, delta. So I'm going to now I can plug in 
this expression here, right? I can, I can use this, this theorem. So I put in a 2 here um, and x to minus, minus epsilon squared over 2 times the sum of j equals 1 to k times 1 squared. Right? And, and so I want this to be less than delta. And so I can now solve for k in this expression. And I can figure out what value k needs to be for the probability that I have more than epsilon r to be small, to be less than delta. And so now, let me um, solve for k. And if I, if I rewrite this, um, this, is, this term here is just going to be 2 times k and less than or equal to less or equal to delta, I can, let's see, I can write um, um, you can write uh, minus epsilon squared over 2k is less or equal to the natural log of, of delta over 2. Right? So I moved the 2 over to the other side, and I took the natural log of both sides, so, so I can get this. Um, to get this minus, get rid of this minus, I can, you can turn this into a minus natural log which flips the inside. Right? And now, now I just need to solve for k. I'm going to say, move the k to this side and write it this way. Um, so L of 2 over delta times uh, 2k. Uh, 2 epsilon over squared, sorry. Uh, 2, over. 2 over epsilon squared. Yeah. Right, so, so, so this k needs to be about, um, so what did I get here? I got k equals 1 over epsilon squared, or it should be, I guess, 2 over epsilon squared times natural log of 2 over delta. Sure. You multiply by minus 1. You should change the direction of So 1 yes. over that thing should be greater than. Thank you. size by minus one. So I, there's an intermediate step where I did this. Okay? Uh, but I, I should have flipped the signs at that point, right? So I, I, I mean, I flipped the, the equality when I multiplied by minus one. So, yeah, so if, if k is, there's, there's so, so basically there's some bound that if, uh, um, so I mean, if, if, if we're familiar with big O notation, then this means you get a bound that looks like this. Um, if you're not familiar with this, that's, that's okay. Um, the actual constants in front of here, um, I was a bit, there's some sloppiness going on if you do this in practice. You actually, um, the coefficients actually like uh, um, one half instead of two. And in practice, um, so this is this is the big O in in practice k is equal to one half one over epsilon squared times natural log of one over delta. There's actually some lower order terms you can find in practice, but this, this gives a pretty good pretty good bound, um, and there's 
there's a theoretical lower bound of, um, of I think, uh, 1 over 16. Uh, you, can, you can put with the, uh, there's some bound known that k equals um, 1 over 16, 1 over epsilon squared. But I don't think this is very tight. It's just the best someone's ever proven is the case. Um, oh, wait. This is not. That's K is. This guy constant. Okay. Um, all right. So, what's. So, this, so okay. So, was it was it clear how 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 I applied this? You need to get these these bunch of small random events. Then you need to transform them so that they satisfy these two two criteria. And then you want to measure something like the average of these events, right? And that that turns out. So it has to, you have to set this up so you're measuring the average. You could also measure the sum, um, and then you get slightly different bounds. Then this alpha tells you something about the sum of these values instead. So you would multiply this by k, and you'd get um, a k squared on top here. So you could also, you could also do something where you have, um, where you got rid of this, you put an r here, and then r squared on top here. And this, this also goes, this is, this is the, same, the same thing. So if you look on the notes, I write up both, both, both forms of these so you can apply them. Um, so once you transfer them, so you get something where you're measuring how far you are from the expected value of something, then, the, um, then you can plug it, you can just plug in this formula. And to get this probably approximately correct framework, you have this delta probability of error. Delta probability of something going wrong Going, you know, you have no idea what happened if you dealt a fraction of the time. Um, but otherwise, you have, except for this delta fraction of the time, you have no more than epsilon a. And, and that's what plugging in this framework tells you. And then you end up solving something which looks pretty similar to this. So the same trick of, you know, over and over again, where you all, um, I went through it because if you end up applying this, you use the same trick. You end up, you know, taking the natural log, you, you, you have to flip the sign here, and then you, uh, then you solve for k. You get something like this. this. This will come up, I think, two or three times this in the class. And I'm, I probably won't ask you to do it, but I just want you to get the intuition of what's going on. So we're going to use a bunch of these small observations, which are accurate, and we're going to group them together to get a, a very good estimate, is what this is. OK. so. What happened? So now I, I estimated, I was estimating this fi tilde, right? And I said that if I have, um, here we are, 1 over epsilon squared log 1 over delta trials, then for this one estimator, I'll have epsilon error. Um, so I'm going to say that this. This is going to get smaller as I go, as I increase, as I as I increase k. But if I look back to this w k here, now this is looking at the sum of these, right? So if I looked at the sum, and I looked at this formulation where I had this extra r here, what's happening is that I'm only going to know the bound that's within within this within a degree r, and let me carve out a little space here. And the, the bound's going to look slightly, slightly different. Instead, I'm going to say that, so instead of, instead of using m being the average of these, I'm going to use something like um, some s, which is going to be the sum over um, these, these xj's, and then I'm going to have the, the probability that, that s is greater than 
that alpha is going to be less than 2 times x to um, alpha squared k over uh, 2k. So what happens, because I'm taking the sum instead of the average, I'm multiplying through on both sides by k here. Um, so in order to do that, al the, al the alpha, or the epsilon in this case, um, is k squared, alpha squared, and k squared. So this, al yeah, <clears throat> thank you, alpha squared and k squared. So the alpha, so this alpha needs to be bigger, so I need to multiply it by k squared on this side. Um, and so then this k and this k cancels, and so, um, did I do that right, or do I need to? Ah, so this, so actually I need to add a k here. Right, so I can do alpha k. So let's keep this the same. So I have alpha squared on got minus side. Minus alpha squared on top and alpha times k. I multiply both this, the left side and the right side by, by k. And so I, 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 kept, I kept this part of the same. Okay, so, so now if I solve for k, I'm going to solve the same way as before. This is plus the delta, then k is going to need to be um, 1 over alpha squared log 1 over delta. Um, but So if I want to get epsilon, so let's say I want to get this to be small, right? this to be epsilon uh, here. I want alpha k to be equal to epsilon. That means that uh, if I want, so if I wrote this in terms of, of of, uh, of epsilon, the error I wanted, which I want to be small, I'm, this is going to be, k is going to need to be equal to k squared over epsilon squared log 1 over delta. Well, first of all, this doesn't really make sense. I have k equals k squared. So I haven't really solved this yet. So earlier when you solved for k, uh, not log should be in the denominator. Um, no, earlier. Here. So if you divide by natural log. So I, I didn't divide by natural log. I, uh, when, I, when I went from here to here, I moved the k to this side. And I moved the. Ah. Uh, what did I do? Uh, yeah, I did something. You're right, I did something wrong. Be one over k here. That's right. Yeah. So no, I no one over k bring in the, the yeah. So such so put one over k greater than greater than or equal to and one over k instead of k. No, right. Yeah. One over k is greater or equal to this. Yeah. I don't think I think I messed up with the analysis somewhere. Um, let me let me check this out because that, that that's not the answer I wanted to give you. So So here's, here's what I did wrong. I, I, I wrote up the wrong bound. 
So whoever is is taking notes on your paper, <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry you should look at the class notes, but um, what, what this should be is, here's the value. So what, what I did wrong is, this is the case if, if this is the sum instead of the average. Okay. Um, so then, if it's the sum, then this is the right. Then this is the right path. So if m is the sum, and then what's going to happen here is that I'm, I'm taking the average instead. So I, I get something like this. So I need to multiply through both sides by k because I want this to be the sum instead. So I have the sum here, and so I get, I multiply both sides by k. And then when I plug in this bound, this was the sum, this was alpha, this alpha becomes a k squared here. And then when I solved it, I had a k squared up top, and this k and this squared part of the k cancel. And so then I get a k here, a k here, and uh, okay. 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 So, <coughs> so it's it's sometimes confusing applying these things, but uh, okay. So, good. Um, so now. What's happening if I'm looking at this? Okay, so, so hopefully this will make sense now. Now when I'm looking at the this this actual deviation instead of the average deviation, what's going to happen is that um, I, I'm going to get this problem um, that I had before, where there was a one over k, right? So now I I have the sum I did multiply through on the, on the right here which means I don't have the k up top. 